Hi, I'm Hussein Sitar, and right now I'm at the Penticton Healthy Living Fair, and we're asking people, what does healthy living mean to you? So this is Emily. She's a youth. Uh, she's a Yes Youth Advisor, and um, she's been here with the Yes Project for quite a while now, helping out. Um, what does Yes Project really mean to you? Yes Project is all about creating and building ties for youth in our community, and making sure that we are helping youth who are struggling, and to basically forging connections with youth and the community. Um, so how long have you been with Yes Project for? I've only embarrassingly been with YES for like about half a year now, but I still really love it and it's important to me. That's awesome. Um, so with the people in the YES project, have you made friends, connections with people here? Has it really brought the youth together? Yes, I've really met a lot of really amazing people and become friends with lots of different people who have amazing ideas. and. It's awesome because a bunch of different minded people get to come together and think up new and creative solutions to problems in our community. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so YES just announced their uh, public fundraising program. Um, so how do you think that Penticton should help out in that way? I would really like, love it if people could do donate, but um, just support and coming and helping out with donations and even just coming up to us and talking to us about and learning more about what we're trying to do here. That's awesome. Thank you, Emily. Uh, so today I have a Yes Youth Advisor with me, Sheridan Cooper. Uh, she has just given a speech about sharing her story um, and her struggles that she's faced in this community. So here to ask you a couple questions, Sheridan. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So what did having the ability to share your story mean to you? It meant getting my word across the community that when a youth is struggling and need, a project like Yes can help them grow in the community and success and succeed. Perfect. Um, and how would a youth resource center have helped you or continue to help you today? Well, when I was going in between home and home, it would have gave me a bed and food and just a safe place to go where now it can still help me with psychologists and other resources that I will need even though I have my own place. Youth in our community need a safe place we can call our own, a place we can go to for help, a place that is designed to, designed by our youth for our youth, a place that is accessible and low barrier, a place that is opening in the evenings and weekends, a place that offers all the services we need out of one centralized location. I can personally tell you the youth in our community need more support. I know what it is like growing up in this community with, and needed more help. I know what it is like not knowing where to go for support. I know what it is like to slip through the cracks of the social and healthcare systems. You know, putting myself out there and taking those risks and flexing that vulnerability muscle is what enabled me to empower men from across the country. What does healthy living mean to you? Healthy living means that every single day you got to wake up and win the battle because you're not going to win every day and waking up that next day and creating a, a positive mindset and not really worrying about the past and worrying about, you know, really what you're going to do today to take that step to living a healthy life is, is, uh, is the most important thing. And I think that's where, you know, people, they, they're so hard on themselves. They're like, oh, I ate pizza last night and I'm going to eat pizza again today. I think uh, I had pizza last night, but uh, I, had, I had a smoothie this morning. Um, is really just like putting your feet on the ground every single day and understanding, you know, this is a new day and, and taking each day by day is probably the most important part. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, do you have any central messages for the youth of Penticton or anywhere really around? Yeah, I would say, like I said, you know, don't be too hard on yourself. Everyone's got their own story and their own way of dealing with what they're going through. And, and really my, you know, my, my message is find a tool to you know, get to your happy place. Find a tool to, to get to a to passion, to flow. And, and when you're having you know, a tough time or, you're, you know, you, like I said, you just ate some pizza, you know, make sure you wake up the next day and, and you can and cultivate a, a routine that gets you back on the right track. Yeah, that's awesome. And one last thing, um, what's one tip you could give to uh, help you calm, uh, help you calm with stress and any, uh, any anxieties or any of that? Well, what I do is I go to the gym. You know, my, my that's my thing, and I know that about myself. If I am having a stressful day the day before, I know that I need to wake up the next day and get some sort of workout in. Uh, I like lifting weights, but I also like working out outdoors. So find whatever that is for you. If it's getting in the kitchen and yeah baking a pie and focusing on the, the flow of and all the the different intricacies of, of that uh, that activity is is really what allows you to escape from that thought process that was slowing you down that was giving you the rough time is uh, really find that passion find that flow and, and make sure you can do it whenever you want 
what did you think about the keynote speaker that was this morning? So Shay, the, the ex-football player, I thought that was uh, really empowering to hear him talk. Uh, and you don't, you know, you think the stereotype uh, pro athlete, you know, doesn't struggle with uh, mental health issues or other issues. And, and for him to be open about it and just talk about uh, how to get through that and, and how to get other people to help them. And so that's... I enjoyed that, uh, and it's, today there's seminars all day, and so it's it's a great uh, he healthy living fair to be part of. Awesome. Um, do you have any um, tips for anyone who is um, suffering with anything like mental health, anxiety, depression, anything that could help them cope with it? Uh, well, there's a lot of groups here, and, and certainly there's a lot of uh, help online, but I, I think to be able to find a, a peer group of someone to talk to about it, I think that's the first step to acknowledging that uh, uh, you need some help. And, uh, you know, there are lots of agencies here who, who answer cries to help. And, and I think it starts with each individual person recognizing uh, that they have an issue and going to uh, uh, friends or family to sort of, uh, or, or a teacher uh, to say, I need some help. And, and uh, through the collectives in the community, we can, we can help address some of the issues that uh, people are uh, being uh, plagued with. Awesome. And uh, just one last thing. Uh, what makes our community strong? Um, I, I think we're a very friendly, active community, and I think that's um, that helps to bring a, make a community vibrant. Uh, when you're, in, you know, even on a winter day along the lake, uh, that walkway is it was continuously used. Um, we uh, were very friendly, uh, you know, to to each other than tourists, and I, I think that makes a, a healthy community. And, and people are a lot more conscious about 100 100 mile diet and and just doing uh, uh, doing what they can to improve their you know, their own health and, and their own environment. So, you know, that was good. What does YES Project mean to you? What can it bring to Penticton? Um, over the years, I've seen all of the struggling youth in Penticton. And in my school and in the community, we've had a lot of suicides, unfortunately, way too many. And it's really unfortunate. And I think that if we had the resources that we don't already have and a safe place to go, we can at least reduce that and try to create a community where we don't have to have that problem ever happen again in our situation. Yeah, that's great. Um, how, what does healthy living mean to you, uh, living in Penticton, living in the Okanagan, where nature is something that's kind of a um, main thing? Um, Nature is definitely my release in the community. I love to hike and I love to ski and I kind of feel like that's those are my happy places. Um, I love to bring my friends there too as well. Healthy living means being able to enjoy all the natural um, opportunities that are available here, being able to walk, bike, swim, ski, snowshoe. It also means being able to have um, safe water, healthy food, protecting the land and protecting the animals who live here. So for me, it's about um, the environment as well as my ability to enjoy the space I live in. That's awesome. Um, what does being the CEO of YES mean to you? Oh, the CEO. I'm not the CEO. I'm just the chair of the committee. Oh, okay. It means a lot. I have worked with kids my whole career. And um, this project has been amazing because a whole lot of people have come together to try and make it happen. So it really celebrates community. It celebrates you guys yeah. and your voice yeah. and your needs. And it celebrates all the things that Penticton can be. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's a real opportunity to show up and to help kids understand how much we care about them. That's awesome. Um, what are some tips you could give about um, mental wellness, like anxiety, depression, something that's really common with the youth? Well, it's actually common with more than youth. I've struggled with anxiety in my life as well. I mean, I do several things to look after myself. I do yoga, I walk, I meditate, I try and surround myself with good friends, try and get enough sleep. And when I've needed to talk to somebody, I've gone and talked to somebody and gotten some help. So those are my tips. What does healthy living mean to you being in a part of a program like that? We try to promote a mental health for everyone, um, individuals, families, regardless of their age or gender, and to uh, help them and to promote mental wellness. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, what are some tips you could give for the people who are here looking out, scoting out um, with the boots and stuff? Well, we do have different programs for people if they um, have issues with uh, depression. We yep. do have the program, the Bounce Back program. We also have the living life to the pro 
to the full program. It's a DB course that and they're free. All, all of our programs are free so that anybody can afford to come. So that is always good. Plus we have um, a variety of things and we have a clubhouse that uh, members that have a mental illness can come and participate in activities in a safe environment and a meals program. Um, and what's something you could say for the people who are um, suffering alone, something like mental health, anxiety, what's uh, a tip or something that you could give to them? Well, I would uh, hope that they would get into the bounce back program so that they can have that or the living life to the full so that they can develop um, strategies to help them deal with that and to know that they're not alone in that regard. Awesome. What does healthy living really mean to you? Healthy living for me, uh, I have had a kidney transplant for 18 years. I got it from my dad. And uh, today we're here to help people, uh, encourage people to live a healthy lifestyle with keeping your kidneys healthy. And so uh, a lot of people that have diabetes or high blood pressure, it can cause kidney failure. I was not one of those situations. I have a birth defect that causes kidney failure. And uh, I've, like I said, I've had a kidney transplant for 18 years and I'm healthy. Awesome. And um, is there any tips for people of Penticton about healthy living, what they can do, how they can um, strive to be a good person? Wow, that's a good one. So, well, specifically with kidneys, um, it's easy to keep your, your kidneys healthy. You can ask your doctor to uh, do what's called an eGFR test. And so what that does is it actually measures uh, approximately what percentage or how your kidneys are functioning. Unfortunately, 10% of the population has kidney disease. And before you know it, uh, because kidney disease has no symptoms, 90% of your kidney function could be gone before you even have any signs of kidney failure. And so that being said, it's easy to get your kidneys tested. Uh, and also, uh, you'll have back pain. You can have a bad taste in your mouth. Your skin could be breaking out. So obviously, I recommend keep hydrated, see your doctor regularly, ask for testing, work out maybe, eat healthy. Awesome. And um, being a representative of the BC transplant, um, from being uh, a kidney transplant person to now, what's the difference? What has been the contrast between that? How have you changed? Absolutely. My life has changed with a kidney transplant incredibly, incredibly. Uh, before my transplant, I used to, okay, so I don't weigh 98 pounds, but the day before my kidney transplant, I weighed 98 pounds. I was so sick. I was so weak. I used to sleep every single day. I had to sleep two hours solid. I just was not a high functioning person. And now I'm able to work basically full time hours. I can be out there shopping. You know, when you have kidney failure, it makes you weak, it makes you exhausted. Um, you'll lack motivation, that's for sure, because you're always so tired. But having a transplant saves your life. You don't, I've never had dialysis, but the people who do dialysis, it's an existence. They are really not um, having a fulfilling life because they have to go to the hospital or they have to do treatment all the time. For myself with a transplant, I take my medication twice a day, every 12 hours, and I just move on with my life like any ordinary other person. Uh, being a donor uh, f for people or for whoever you donated for, what is that like uh, knowing that your kidney has been to someone who really needed it? My husband uh, required a kidney as well. He had kidney disease, so he received a kidney from a cadaver donor. I was paired with him, but was unable to donate to him. When I saw what happened to our family, when you have kidney disease, and then when you get a kidney, it's like somebody flipped a switch in our house, and all of a sudden we're back living again. It's a very confining kind of a disease. It's, um, he was on dialysis. I mean, it doesn't mean you can't do anything, but it's certainly confining to a form and exhausting. So for me to give uh, uh, my kidney to somebody else, I don't know who it is, but I think somewhere in Vancouver, I'm just, I'm assuming somebody there is smiling and having a life again. It's just, it's a remarkable, remarkable kind of a thing to happen to a family. And it's, and it's just not just to my husband, but obviously the entire family benefits from this. Okay, sorry. Awesome, that's all right. Um, and so being a volunteer for the Kidney Foundation, um, what's that like spreading information and uh, telling people about this group? Oh, we're passionate about it. Obviously, we live with it, you know, and uh, we know exactly what, how 
how important it is to have health and uh, what changes can happen in a family with this. So donating a little bit of time throughout a year is, and it's fun. Get to talk to you guys. Come on. <laughs> Working with South Okanagan Immigrant and Community Services, we provide services to the immigrants and the refugees who already landed in Canada. We try to help them to get settled in the community and the society. Health is the key of your success, your journey, everything. We try to make them understand that like they're from different countries, from their different backgrounds, so they have different approaches about health and healthy living. Here, we try to um, help them to find that, no, this is actually healthy and it will keep you fit, you will be okay for the rest of your life. And because immigrants, they are from different cultures, they are very ignorant of a lot of Canadian cultures and habits. So we try to help them doing that. That's why we are here and we are trying to help people yeah. about healthy living and especially mental health. Because when people, they come to Canada, they feel very isolated and they feel that, okay, we are newcomer here, probably people, they don't like us. But no, mental health is also important to feel confident. And this, our, our office, we help the immigrants to help them to understand that, no, you are confident, you are well enough, be healthy, be fit. Mm -hmm. Then your journey, your everything, your settlement, everything will be fine. Awesome, thank you. And um, what does diversity mean for Penticton and the Okanagan? Diversity, we work, um, diversity means that a society, it, a society, a community, community, it is not only the one country, it's not, especially Canada, because our Prime Minister, he always talks about diversity, multicultural, multiculturalism. We believe in that, that no, we can build a bigger society, we can build a stronger community. If we all of people from all over the world, they work together, that's why we believe in diversity, because you know, different people, they have so much, they have very talent, they are very talented. We try to put those talent uh, together and try to make them uh, to get settled so that they can use their brains, their talent and their ideas to bring a stronger society and stronger community. That's how I think diversity can help to bring a better co community and society. Uh, right, so being the project coordinator for Yes Project, um, what does that mean to you and your community? What does that mean to me and my community? Well, I think the YES project is a much needed community development project in our community and it raises awareness for young people in Penticton as well as our goal um, to build a youth resource center. Yeah. Awesome. Um, today at the Healthy Living Fair is actually the launch of the fundraising campaign for the uh, Youth Resource Center. Awesome. So um, for the launch of the campaign, um, what are you expecting it uh, to bring to uh, your group? Um, well, we're accepting donations and raising awareness for the Youth Resource Center. Um, if anyone's interested in donating to the YES Project, um, they can call up the Community Foundation or make a donation online through our website at penticktonyouth.ca. Um, we're going to need a lot of community support as well as donations to help us build our Youth Resource Center. Um, so we're really looking forward to Penticton kind of stepping up and coming together and uniting as a community to support Penticton Youth. Um, awesome. And um, uh, working with students uh, and uh, even adults who have suffered with uh, mental illnesses like anxiety and depression, uh, what's a couple tips or anything you could say to help people who are coping or suffering with that? Ooh, that's a great question. I would say some tips for coping with mental health. Just take a breather, take a breath. Um, I guess the way I kind of look at it is your cup, right? So you have you have this glass and you have your job and you have additional stresses and traffic and everything kind of fills your cup up. So the key is to try and do things, some self-care tips to try and empty your cup. So then when something goes wrong, like the stapler doesn't work, it doesn't make you overflow. So the idea is, is to practice self-care techniques such as yoga. Just honestly, for me, I just really like relaxing in the tub and being warm going for walks. I mean, I just encourage everyone to find their own thing that helps them um, with their mental health and just to really book in schedule time to take care of themselves. Awesome. And um, what does healthy living mean to you? What does healthy living mean to me? It means putting me first, which I'm not very good at, um, but it means taking care of myself spiritually, um, emotionally, mentally, and physically. 
So um, being the uh, photographer uh, around the Healthy Living Fair, um, what are some things you've seen that can contribute to um, what is healthy living? Well, being the photographer, I've really been around and I've gotten a lot of pictures of all the booths, all the booths and all the people running them. And uh, really, healthy living is really beneficial to everybody and it shows just how beneficial really watching what you eat and watching what you do can be, whether it be taking a few minutes each day to exercise or a few minutes each day to watch what you eat. It just really benefits just the average population. Awesome. And um, but what would healthy living mean to you personally? To me personally, healthy living is just being aware and being cautious of everything you do and eat and just being happy. And uh, being a photographer, is that a thing that helps you cope with healthy living? Uh, being a photographer, it really helps me because you can always, with pictures, look back on the times that you've seen when you said, hey, that was a really cool event or that was a really cool thing that was going on. And you can look back and frame it and say, this is what I want to strive to do every day of my life. So uh, being the mayor, what does healthy living mean to your community, to where you live? Well, I think we have a fairly active community we're quite proud of. Uh, you know, I, I even walked here today to, for the opening ceremonies. And I think uh, having an affair like this today is, is a, a good for people to sort of get some uh, tips and tricks on how to be a bit more healthy or more active and ask you how to um, get your friends and family and loved ones involved without uh, maybe preaching or nagging at them so they see the light and, and uh, just to be a bit more uh, active and, and healthy.